a very good morning to all viewers and listeners. I am the academic head of Rao's IAS Study Circle, a 63-year-old educational organization that focuses solely on helping students who aspire to become IAS officers. This experimental video is a pilot project or a beta version of what is supposed to follow in the instructional videos I have promised my students. Please watch this video till the end and feel free to give your valuable suggestions on how we can improve the future videos. I have used my accent neutral voice in this video session, so that my students who are not from North India do not have a problem with my normal North Indian accent. So you will find that my voice sounds different and more didactic slow and clear, in this video session. In the first video I plan to give you a Word document that you can download and attempt as a test with time constraints. It will contain the 27 comprehension questions that appeared in the IAS 2011 prelim CSET paper 2. You will get 55 minutes of time to attempt the 27 questions. Attempt the questions with the strategy taught in class and once you have attempted the questions, watch the video. The video begins with a quick revision of the standard strategy used in comprehension questions. This is followed by a short analysis of the 27 questions of IAS 2011 Prelim CSET Paper 2. And then we look at the first passage, and individual analysis of each question. In this video, I have only done till the first question. Please check with a critical attitude, whether the extent of details to which I have explained the question is enough or do you need more explanation. Please feel free to comment on the video whether positive or negative. I would love to have your suggestions that I can incorporate in the first complete video on 27 comprehension questions that appeared in the IAS 2011 prelim CSET paper 2. Your inputs will decide what direction this project takes further. Now let's analyze the 2011 IAS Prelim CSET Paper 2 Comprehension Section Questions. The 27 comprehension questions were based on 7 short passages ranging from 122 to 278 words. Each passage was followed by 3 to 5 questions. Because passages occupy a lot of space so when students scan the 2011 IAS Prelim CSET Paper 2, it just seemed to be filled up with reading comprehension. The seven comprehension passages were of easy to moderate level of difficulty in understanding, though some questions invited a lot of silly mistakes. A lot of confusing questions had attractive chimerical trap answers made up of information picked up from two different sentences which did not agree with the passage. So students who are into the habit of reading and understanding the passage, rely on memory and do not regress back to confirm the answer would have found the trap answers very familiar and got a feeling I just read this, and incorrectly picked up these trap answers. Overall the passages and the questions were absolutely objective and any student who cross-checked answers with passage before ticking them wouldn't have faced a problem. Handling the comprehension questions becomes easier if you read the passage casually with a cool mind and do not focus on trying to understand each and everything written in the passage and do not focus on trying to remember everything. In the limited amount of time that you get on the exam, you cannot afford to focus on understanding each and everything written in the passage or focus on trying to remember everything written in the passage. Believe us, when we tell you that you have a great brain and if it is not overloaded with the tension of understanding and remembering everything, then it will perform excellently. So with a cool reading of the passage will give you enough of sense of the passage to answer questions. Moreover, it's an open book exam and the passages are not running away. They will be in front of you and if you need any information to solve a question then you can go back to the passage and get proof of your answer. After reading the passage with a cool mind, comes the next step of jumping into questions. Handling the comprehension questions becomes easier if you are aware of the various types of questions and know the standard procedure for cracking them. On the CSAT, comprehension has three categories of questions, specific questions, general questions, and a, perception questions. You need to be good at identifying the type of question you are handling and you should know the right procedure or strategy for solving that question type. When it comes to attempting questions, 
students make the second possible mistake of attempting every question with the same zest, procedure and time. Actually questions are of three different flavors, the three types not only need a different amount of time to solve but also demand a different method and attitude to solve. The three type of questions are specific, general and perception questions, the specific questions are the most abundant and the most easy also. The answers of these questions are written bluntly clear in a particular part of the passage. So all you are expected in a specific question is to understand what data, facts or figures is the question asking for. Now you go back to the passage and find the required information and then match it with the four options. Three options will not match the information in passage and one option matches. And you get your answer objectively and it does not even take a lot of time. The second type of questions are general questions. They are about 5 to 20 percent of questions. The general questions ask for information that pertains to the whole passage in a holistic manner. The conventional way of solving these questions requires that you read and understand the passage, and this method does give right answers, but you do not have the luxury of so much time on the CSAT to use this conventional method. That's the reason we learned critical mapping in class to handle this seemingly difficult question type. The third type of questions are perception questions. They are also about 5 to 20 percent of questions. These questions require a certain sense of English language and are the only ones to test your actual understanding or comprehension of a bigger chunk of the passage. If we look at examples of each of the three question types then, specific questions can be of six types, vocabulary and context, line reference, specific detail, implied idea, multiple statement and the Nelly or questions using the words not, except, least, or incorrect. General questions can ask you for topic, title, or heading of passage, tone, or attitude of author and his views, organization, structure, architecture, or construction of passage. General questions most frequently ask you for the main, central, or primary idea, theme, purpose, function, concern, thrust, focus, interest, objective, intent, goal and message of the author or passage. Rather asking the central message of the passage is actually a UPSC favorite. Perception questions can ask you for logical structure or relevance of a sentence or word, and check your argumentation skills by asking you the assumption taken by author, or what option would end up strengthening or weakening the author's viewpoint. As you can see from this table, out of all these three question types, only the perception questions need an understanding of the passage. Luckily, the perception questions appear least frequently on the exam. This passage was the first one on the 2011 exam. It was a short passage with 278 words and was followed by five questions. While reading this passage, if you focus too much on understanding everything written in passage, then you will psyche yourself out end up suffering from performance pressure or test anxiety or just tension. And as we have already discussed in class, tension slows down your brain. So the ideal way was to read it casually with a cool mind and go back to the passage to get proof of your answers. The first question based on this passage was a multiple statement question in which you have to check whether one or more statements are right according to the passage. Though such questions are easy but they take more time to solve as they have many questions rolled into one. When you check the veracity of the first statement, which states that the objective of inclusive growth was laid down by the founding fathers of the nation, you can easily identify the keywords founding fathers of the nation. The founding fathers of the nation are clearly mentioned in the second paragraph. If you read this key sentence, it say that the aim must be to stay with the objective of inclusive growth that was laid down by the founding fathers of the nation blah 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 this is the same as what the first statement says. So statement 1 is correct. When you check the veracity of the second statement which states that need of the hour is to have an enabling government. You can easily identify the keywords need of the hour. 
the need of the hour is clearly mentioned in the second sentence of the passage. If you read this key sentence, it say that the need of the hour is to have an enabling government. This is the same as what the second statement says. So statement 2 is also correct. Now, when you check the third statement, which states that the government should engage in maximum interference in market processes. You can easily identify the keywords interference in market processes. The keywords, interference in market processes are clearly mentioned in the last sentence of the passage. If you read this key sentence, it say that hence we need a government that, when it comes to the market, sets effective incentive compatible rules and remains on the sidelines with minimal interference, etc. This is the opposite of what the third statement says. So statement 3 is incorrect. Now, when you check the fourth statement, which states that there is a need to change the size of the government, you can easily identify the keywords which are size of the government. The keyword size of the government are only mentioned in the last sentence of the first paragraph. If you read this key sentence, it say that asking the government to produce all the essential goods, create all the necessary jobs, and keep a curb on the prices of all goods is to lead to a large cumbersome bureaucracy and widespread corruption. This is not the same as what the fourth statement says. So statement 4 is incorrect. Based on this assessment of the four statements, we can easily mark option A as the correct answer. I have only shown you the explanations of question 1, rest of the questions explanations and the Word document carrying all the 27 questions will be released in a week's time. Until then, I want you to tell me whether you like this video session and you have to give me any suggestions to improve such videos. I want you to subscribe this YouTube channel, so that you can automatically get the future instructional videos, that I plan to release weekly or fortnightly. I also want you to share this video on your Facebook page so that others can benefit.